Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today. My name is Sergey Ganesian. A few days ago, Ukrainian journalist Anastasia Melnichenko started a campaign on social media called I am not afraid to say it. It encourages women that suffered from rape and sexual harassment to share their stories to bring the sexual violence issue to the forefront. And today we are going to talk about that with our guest Anna Dovopol, a coordinator of the Gender Democracy Program at the Heinrich Biol Foundation in Ukraine. Ms. Dovopol, thank you very much for joining me today. Hello. So, Ms. Dovopol, let's talk about the uh, campaign and the uh, noise about this campaign that it uh, stirred in Ukraine. Before that, we never even thought about uh, the horrors that some women have to deal on a regular basis. And we heard about this, program, this problem in America, in the West, but never thought it was a problem in Ukraine. And now the women start to speak about this, and their stories are overwhelming, actually. So do you think this openness will help? Um, well, first of all, I think we didn't hear about the program, the, the problem, because uh, we didn't have uh, social media for many years. That's a new phenomenon, and the social media does give an opportunity to speak about something and to give, uh, and this action can spread so internationally, not only locally. Um, Ukraine um, has the law on domestic violence. Uh, the law has. Um, the law has been existing uh, since uh, the independence days. The problem is that women don't uh, don't often go to the police, don't often call the police. We have this culture that uh, everything that happens within the family stays within the family. And if it, even if it didn't happen within the family, if it was a best friend or a complete stranger? This law relates to domestic violence, which is, which is the violence that happens within, within the relationship even within the marriage. So there is, uh, it can be also a marital rape, but in our society, marital rape cannot exist, exist uh, the, the Jure, uh, because uh, a man has the right for his uh, woman to do everything that he wants. So our culture is so deeply patriarchal that women also don't perceive it as violence. And they are all often ashamed uh, to go, to, go the, to the police. They, uh, they don't, they're ashamed uh, to, uh, bring the problems in their families to the light and they also even though their husband can beat them they can still say oh but I'm so sorry for him I don't want him to be punished because I love him these issues can be brought to the light by women activists and by feminists and this is what happened in the West the feminist movement in the West um, in Canada in, in, in what we call the Western world has been active since uh, 60s and 70s. And that was one of the issues that women were so purposefully uh, dealing with. They said, uh, this thing should not be tolerated. And they pushed the government very hard and they talked to the society saying that the violence, any violence should not be tolerated. But it's not happening in Ukraine, I take it. Um, it's not happening so largely. There is no, uh, the feminist movement in Ukraine, um, the women's movement, um, is, is doing some things, but it's still not as strong uh, as to bring the, the issue so publicly. And, and there are different reasons for this, but that's the reality. So do you think this social campaign called I'm not afraid to say it will help bring this issue to the forefront, will help the women open up and tell Absolutely. about the experience? It did help. It already did help uh, women to open up. Uh, the immediate effect of this campaign, which I can see, that it's sort of, or, sort of a group therapy. Uh, women who, uh, many women who used to think that it's their own fault, it's uh, the issue that only them struggled with, can now see that this is a systematic issue. It's not individual, but it's many women uh, go through it because of the system, because of how the culture works. And it's not their fault, it's the fault of the, of the perpetrator who is usually a man. Uh, so definitely it has a psychotherapeutic effect. They, if you say something that has been uh, worrying you f for a long time, that helps you to, to release this. In Ukraine, there are one of the problems that, was, uh, that we face when speaking with the issues of domestic violence is that the state does not provide uh, shelters for women where they can go. So according in, in uh, many Western countries, if a woman suffers from domestic violence from her partner or from somebody she lives with, this, uh, the, the perpetrator has to leave. So he cannot stay in their apartments. The woman should stay. And the police uh, makes an order that he stays somewhere, wherever he wants or can, um, so that he doesn't attack a woman. In our country, the woman has to leave. And often she doesn't have where to live. And this is one of the reasons why the woman stays in, in, in the home. Um, 
so this crisis centers for women. There are very, very few. The state doesn't give money for that. And um, some NGOs have them, but since it's a very costly project, um, they are very few. And women o often have literally nowhere to go, so they stay in the violent relationship. And that's it's one of the reasons why, why they stay. But okay, if, if it happens within the marriage, it's one thing, but when it happens uh, just uh, when women are alone uh, outside in the street at night, and uh, you've mentioned this uh, feel of shame or feel of guilt that it's my fault. And I actually read uh, stories of men who accused the victims or the, the, the rape victims, and they called them, uh, they said that women shouldn't be uh, alone outside at night or that women should be, uh, shouldn't be dressed in a, what they call a provocative way or that women should, should be able to defend themselves. So it's a, uh, eventually it's up to women to avoid being raped and not, uh, not up to the rapists to actually stop what they're doing. And so do you think this cultural thing, will it ever change in Ukraine? Because governmental help is one thing, but uh, if it uh, happens on a... On a different level, yeah, you're very right. I also read a lot of this comment that is the victim's help. Uh, of course, this is the default argument, but it's very convenient. In the patriarchal system, uh, where uh, the system that benefits men also physically and symbolically, that's a very convenient argumentation. And I was also surprised that many Ukrainian political uh, decision makers, uh, cultural leaders have supported this rhetoric. Uh, the situation can change if more and more people, women and men alike, start talking about this and start speaking about gender relationship in general and start saying, look, this is not right. Here is the different arguments. That's how it should be. So the more we start talking about this, the more the situation changes. And the flash mob is definitely, it was this, um, a very, it gave this um, impetus for change. I have seen also numerous um, blogs, articles on other gender issues, uh, not necessarily vi direct violence or rape, uh, that were triggered by this flash mob. One woman said, like, I always struggle with my body. Um, I, was, uh, I learned that a woman should be thin and beautiful and I'm not, and this is one of the issues that I struggle with. So it's like a snowball effect, and that's very important. And I definitely think it's one of the ways to change the situation. And it's also very important that men speak, uh, say that um, I've never, I support the women who wrote this, I, I understand that men are often perpetrators. Uh, someone said, I confess that I, I was uh, quite violent in my relationship and I'm so sorry for this and I, I'm aware of this, I recognize this. And I think it's an amazing effect. I think there was uh, sexual harassment against men but it's, while it's uh, difficult, extremely difficult for women to talk about these things, it's probably nearly impossible uh, for men to say uh, anything like that. So you're what's your take on yeah, that? Yeah, you're very right. And probably you have uh, also seen uh, some of, that some of the men have posted their stories. They're much, uh, much, much, less, um, in, much fewer in numbers, uh, which is obvious. And uh, one of my gay friends posted a story saying that when he was in a... Uh, in, in a group with men and he was already gay and those were also a group of uh, young gay men, he was raped. So the rape, um, we don't hear stories of women raping men, we hear stories of men raping women or men raping men. So rape um, or, or any sexual violence as such, is the, it's not about sex, it's about power and dominance. So this is a problem when uh, certain people want to, s want to exercise their dominance over other people. And, um, and women presumably don't feel this need to uh, dominate. Women are raised. That's about our gender socialization. This is how men and women are raised. Women are not raised to say that they, uh, they should be uh, in power. They should have this, um, this power over somebody else. So men definitely uh, can be victims and are victims of violence and or, or different kinds of violence and harassment. But as you rightly said, uh, it's very, um, it's so shameful in our society for a man to say that he, uh, he was uh, raped or sexually harassed by other men because that automatically puts a label of gay on him, which is very, uh, and it's a very st strong stigma. But it also means that uh, for men, um, they have to confess that they are not, um, they're not masculine enough, they're not strong enough. And, in, and that's part of, this, of the patriarchal culture that men have to be strong. If you're not strong, you're not a real man, and that means that you're a second, uh, a second class man. So this, f for these for this reasons, men don't go to the police with that. And uh, on, the one, on the other hand, 
uh, imagine if uh, a man goes to a, somewhere not in Kyiv, but in uh, no Cherkasy Oblast, in a small town. A man goes to the police and says, "Look, I was uh, I was drunk. I was hanging out with my friends, and I was raped." Can you imagine what he would hear from the police officers? A local police officers were ignorant and, and this, arrogant. And this, I mean, it, 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 the situation can be the same in Kyiv. I just assume that with the police reform, the situation is changing a little bit, but very slowly. And this is the reason why men and women also, many women don't go to the police, because the police says, uh, first the police can mock, uh, the police can also rape, and we know numerous cases of police, tor of different police torture and rape as well, and Amnesty International is documenting that. But the police can also say, this is your domestic issue, we don't deal with that. Um, so th there is the need to change the system both from within and uh, from outside. The state should but be I'm changed. sorry, but Ukraine is boasting, basically boasting about its new police, so uh, it's probably the situation could be changing right now. Uh, do you see any tendency for an improvement? Uh, it's still, the police was, the police is there for a very short period of time. The reform uh, tackled mostly the patrol police and patrol police does not deal with those cases. So that's still the police officers who are in the police stations that deal with it. There is no statistics yet on that. I, I think um, in, in a year we can talk about some results and uh, situation. But I know that the, pol the new police was trained in those uh, trainings that they have to go through. They, were, uh, they had classes on uh, gender, gender tolerance, um, anti-discrimination and all that stuff. All right, and one final question about the changes at the country level. You mentioned the Istanbul Convention, right? You mentioned the shelters that uh, the government should provide for women. But what else? What else can be done to effectively stop this issue in Ukraine? Probably in Russia and uh, any post-Soviet countries too. Yeah, let's. Yeah, obviously any post-Soviet countries. Uh, the state should give a very clear message to the society that violence should not be tolerated, any kind of violence, including sexual violence against women. Ukraine, given the situation, the war situation in the east of the country, Ukraine is now experienced the rise of militarization. So the general level of aggression in the country is much higher and the tolerance to aggression is much higher. This is, and it also contributes strongly to the cases of, um, of, of rape and sexual assault of women. And, uh, rape, um, and rape and sexual assault on the part of those who, who were in the um, anti-terroristic operation and come back, uh, it, it has increased. And you know this very famous uh, case that was recently that a man uh, who came back from the war, he raped a young woman and he was, uh, his sentence was much lighter because he was in the war. And it's nonsense. Uh, men who come back from the war, they suffer what is called post-traumatic syndrome. And it's widely recognized and uh, all the psychologists in the world know that that's... So it's not their fault. It's just because of the experience they went through. Their level of aggression and control of themselves is much... Is, is lower and they have, um, so they have to work with this. But men also don't go to the psychologist, they don't dare to recognize that they have a problem because the man should not have a problem. It makes him of less of a man. Um, so this should be changed on the state level, ex except for the, uh, not only the law, besides for the laws, but also the state can start uh, social campaigns saying you should go to the, you should go and seek help. The viol any violence should not be tolerated. There are so many things that can be done. Um, the, there should be the, the political will and also the understanding that this is not the minor uh, issue. This is not the issue of the second importance. This is, um, so we'll, we'll finish the war and then we will deal with everything else. No, it doesn't work like that. We have to deal with this now. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time and I can only hope the activists good luck because it seems it's up to them to stop these things while Ukraine is only going to, uh, to address this issue. Ms. Dahopal, thank you very much for your answers and for your time. They're much appreciated. Thank you. So this is where we have to leave. You've been watching Ukraine Today. I'm Sergei Ganesian. Many thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.